a refuge in the middle of a bustling city. You can be in nature or in the city in two seconds. Celebrating 120 years of being part of the community. Everyone like shares this space and I like that. We'll explore everything a park has to offer. There's always something going on. The hidden treasures inside this 200 acre green space. We have so many hidden treasures here at Piedmont Park. And the plans to make it even better. I absolutely love it. This is Georgia's Hidden Treasures, Piedmont Park, a family to family special. Hi there, I'm Justin Farmer. So glad you're joining us. And today we are coming to you from one of Georgia's most treasured locations. Of course, we're talking about our beautiful Piedmont Park. Hello, I'm Karen Greer. You may be wondering, how is Piedmont Park a hidden treasure? Well, inside the sprawling 200 plus acre green space are lots of hidden treasures. And over the next 30 minutes, we'll explore all of them. This is a huge year for Piedmont Park, celebrating its 120th birthday and the 35th anniversary of the Piedmont Park Conservancy. And big things are coming. The park is truly like a sanctuary in its own little space in the city. Definitely a hidden treasure. I absolutely love it. Whether you head there for a little exercise, your favorite sport, a festival or concert, or just a little bit of peace and quiet. You can be in nature or in the city in two seconds. Piedmont Park in Midtown Atlanta has something for everyone. So it's no wonder the park is Atlanta's most visited, hosting more than six million people a year. There is always something going on. And there's about to be a lot more going on as Piedmont Park celebrates its 120th birthday. 120 years of history at the center of Atlanta. The land was initially a forest purchased by settlers in the 1800s. It was developed and became the site of fairs and expos, a horse race track, the first game of the Georgia-Auburn football rivalry, and Atlanta's original pro baseball team, the Crackers. Piedmont Park holds a great rich history. The city of Atlanta bought the land in 1904 and throughout the decades, it became the place to gather. It's also um, one of the first parks that became integrated back in the day because all the parks were not. From civil rights to LGBT rights rallies. It's been like the gathering place, if you will, for many events, whether it's political, whether it's social, whether it's festive. And of course, some of the most iconic music performances in history. I, I think that a place as big as this um, offers a really good experience when it comes to like listening to various different music artists, connecting with artists, connecting with the fellow fans as well. As the park celebrates its 120th birthday, the Piedmont Park Conservancy is celebrating its 35th anniversary. Piedmont Park is, is the shining jewel of the Southeast. Doug Widener is the CEO of the Piedmont Park Conservancy. Since 1989, the Conservancy has partnered with the city of Atlanta to maintain, protect, and enhance the park and its 200 plus acres. Importantly, we raise capital dollars to improve the park. So the city does a lot with their capital funding, but we raise private dollars to enhance and, and build the park. It's been a great relationship over the years in trying to improve the look, the feel, the safety, uh, and operations of the park with them. Parks are really critical to the health and vitality of all, um, all communities. That's what parks provide us, is a place to gather, a place to celebrate these milestones in our lives and milestones in our community. And speaking of celebrations, the park and the Conservancy are celebrating the 90 days of summer. 
For our 35th year, we wanted to really have a way for folks to kind of come back and celebrate the park during its most visited time, the summer. So it's a way to really acknowledge all of us as users and, and folks that can benefit the park. So the first thing is like, we just want to encourage people to come out and enjoy the parks. That means taking advantage of all the parks programs and taking part in the development of a new comprehensive plan, the first one in 25 years. What kinds of things are you looking at? The idea behind this is to really create um, an engaging, world-class, accessible, um, equitable park for now and for the future. The comprehensive plan will help the park evolve with the city, and the Conservancy wants to hear from everyone about what they would like to see. More family activities, more, um, more festivals, and more concerts. I'd probably say more kids, area playground. We're going to be doing a lot of community input, stakeholders, families, government leaders, park users from all perspectives to come together and share what's working well in the park, what's not. I would love to see more water features, um, because especially being in the city, don't really see a lot of water. If I had a million dollars, I would make that park swim, the pond swimmable even. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's perfect. I really do. I know that is a big thing when it comes to the conservancy. You want to ensure that safety, that security. What are you guys doing to make sure these residents are safe? And I would say uh, an important part of our comprehensive planning will be focused on safety and security. But I think folks have seen over the course of the past several months, new cameras and new lighting being installed, increased security. We run security with the city, so there's security overnight. The plan could include expanding the park to the corner of Piedmont and Monroe. And out of that plan, we will have a phased approach with uh, any, anywhere from minor uh, adjustments to programs and um, uh, facilities here to major initiatives that could completely change some of the areas of the park and how they look and feel. All ideas are welcome, keeping in mind the park always wants to be a good neighbor. We want to make sure that we're doing things that the neighbors like, enjoy, and we take care of the park. We're all stewards of the park. Many people will say Pima Park is their backyard, and we're the steward here who helps maintain that. I just love the whole ambiance of coming to Piedmont Park. I love it. The 90 days of summer will culminate in a giant celebration, the party for Piedmont Park on September 26th. Come and celebrate the park uh, and really uh, give back to the park and celebrate all that it gives to us every, every day and every year. I think we learned in the pandemic how important open space and access to open space for everyone is. Parks are great equalizers. We all have equal access to the park and it really is Atlanta's shining gem. Everyone like shares this space and I like that. Well, there's so many different people here and it's always a great time. It feels more community than ever. So in partnership, we committed to elevating Piedmont and bringing additional resources, not only to support Piedmont Park, but to support all of our parks. Um, when we have a healthy Piedmont Park, we know that people come to Atlanta, they invest in Atlanta, and then they help our neighborhood parks. Before we go, a message to the community on behalf of the park. Well, I first just want to say thank you. Um, the, the, the community that utilize the park, that give to the park every day, we wouldn't be able to do this work without the community. Piedmont Park is always looking to evolve with our community, and there are projects underway right now to make our park experience even better. We've got uh, our 35th year anniversary uh, campaign that's going on at this time. As part of that, we have about two and a half million dollars in deferred maintenance and other uh, infrastructure and facility projects that are going on. And a couple of those being landscaping improvements to our entrances at the park. It's exciting. We've got a lovely pool and inside the pool we've got a shade structure that's getting repaired and replaced. We're going to resurface the pool as well. A couple of the other projects is uh, we've got a beautiful tree canopy here and some really old trees that need some love. And doing an inventory on the trees that we have here we're going to do a pruning campaign. We're going to have additional fertilization and disease control as part of that project. And then on the northern part of the park with Legacy Fountain. It's a splash pad, beautiful area for kids and family to go uh, visit. Uh, it's about 13 plus years old. It needs a little renovation itself. 
We do have an uh, initiative to put in some ambient lighting around the active oval, and that's where our uh, track is, about a half mile gravel track around our soccer, lacrosse, and softball fields. And yeah, we're looking to put some safety and security lighting, but also provides an atmosphere where people can use the active oval during the evening or early morning hours. We're trying to give the park a little bit of love uh, over the, the, the rest of this year, but then ongoing. Think you know Piedmont Park? With more than 200 acres, there's so much more to explore. We'll introduce you to some of the hidden treasures. There's never like a dull moment in the park though. Everything seems like an unexplored part of the park. And looking for a new activity? There's something for everyone. We'll explore the unique programs the park has to offer. There's always something to do. Georgia's Hidden Treasures is a family to family special. Produced in partnership with Kroger, Wellstar Health System, American Signature Furniture, Delta Community Credit Union, and Georgia Natural Gas. Welcome back to Georgia's Hidden Treasures, Piedmont Park, a family to family special. Tennis anyone? The Sharon Lester Tennis Center at Piedmont Park features 12 tennis courts. You can play with a friend in a league or take a lesson. And there's lots of room for pickleball too, with pickleball lines on some of the tennis courts and rolling net. We have so many hidden treasures here at Piedmont Park. We have the playscape, the Gucci playscape. It's a Japanese artifact, and it's been with us since the bicentennial, 1976, as a partnership with the High Museum. So we're pretty excited about that, and a lot of people are not familiar with that piece of art that we have here, which is actually a kid's playground. There's never, like, a dull moment in the park. Everything seems like an unexplored part of the park. That red brick building, that is one of the oldest standing buildings here at Piedmont Park since 1911. It is the former bathhouse for ladies who used to come here to um, swim in the lake behind us. And it is now the dockside, the visitor center, where many weddings are being held at. Lake Claramere, a lot of people don't know that they can come here and fish. Lake Claramere means clear lake. It used to be an ice skating rink back <laughs> centuries ago, and it's just a wonderful place to be here at Piedmont Park. One of my favorite spots in the park is, it is a little hidden because of the tree canopy. We've got this amazing uh, trail and boardwalk on the south side of Lake Claremere, and it's just a beautiful area to kind of walk, have a little quiet time to yourself and enjoy nature. The pool is one of those places, and I tell you, the history behind that pool, it got renovated in 2009, but before that, it was in really bad shape, and the Conservancy, the nonprofit that raises money for Piedmont Park, did just that, raised funds, had it renovated, and now it is one of those hidden treasures, an absolute jewel to come to, especially on hot days like today. One of the other hidden treasures that we have is we have a dedication at Mayor's Grove Park where the kids play also. That's a um, monument built out for all of our um, mayors that has taken place and it's really a great place to come read history and learn of all of the Atlanta mayors that have been here. And I have yet to explore most of it so it's, it's just really cool. So everyone seems to know it's the Central Park of uh, Atlanta. There are so many hidden treasures inside Piedmont Park, from fishing to gardening, there are programs for everyone. We're really just looking for ways to invigorate the space and build community in it and have something for everybody. We try to do something for everyone that's gonna bring everyone joy. Fishing, gardening, walking and biking clubs, even trivia nights. A wide range of community programs offered by the Piedmont Park Conservancy. It's a really nice park with a lot of different 
opportunities and a lot of things to do. You can try different things. The goal is to provide entertaining, engaging, and educational programs for the public. We do free environmental education speaker series oftentimes, and any time that you can educate people or build that connection with people to the park or to nature or to green spaces, uh, it's vital. The Conservancy also offers school field trips and summer camps, serving more than 4,000 children last year alone. We spend all day outside. Kids are at the pool, kids are at the playground. All of the games that they play, all the crafts they make are tied into environmental education. There are programs for everyone and not just people. A permitted special events, so we do things like our Splish Splash Doggy Bash. Before we close the pool down for the season, we allow Lantons to bring out their dogs, all sizes, all types, to swim in the pool, and it's just a great event. There's always a ton of events, always a ton of people out, so it's, it's fun. There's always something to do. Programs run by a small but passionate team. I think a lot of the times the park saved my life. I started as a summer camp counselor. I'm here now. I have grown with the space and I, I get to really see so many, the, the, the impact that community building has on others aside from myself. All right, Casey, you don't tell a journalist that. How would you say the park has saved your life? It just gave me purpose. It, it showed me like the intrinsic value, yes, of green spaces. I've always grown up with an appreciation for parks, but really how vital it is. And also, it just gave me meaning. I have found a big meaning in um, getting to contribute to a space that is so loved by so many. Piedmont Park is an amazing place to hold events, such as weddings. And you've likely seen Piedmont Park as a backdrop in your favorite TV shows and movies. When the sun sets, You can see the sun peeking through the skyline in Midtown, and it's really beautiful. With views like these, it is no wonder so many people and companies choose Piedmont Park for their important events. In 2023, the park hosted 170 private events, including many weddings. I actually saw a proposal here a few weeks ago. That was really cute. And corporate gatherings. There are three primary indoor spaces the Conservancy rents for private use. Greystone is our more modern venue. It's very chic, it's very beautiful. Magnolia Hall gives you a very, almost um, like a cabin feel. And then Dockside has the beautiful dock that overlooks Lake Claire Mere. And then I have the Promenade, which is my outdoor event space. And that's uh, just a big grassy uh, green area and is very popular for corporate family fun days, even uh, cultural events. The park hosts an impressive variety of cultural events throughout the year, attracting thousands of people. The park also serves as a prime location for commercial and film productions. Hi, just FYI, we can all hear you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. So it's very common to turn on your, your, your television or turn on one of your a movie on Netflix and see the park in some fashion. It's very rewarding to when I turn on my TV and I see the park as well and kind of highlighted and nice and beautiful. Venue and site rentals are a way to bring more exposure to the park and they're an important revenue generator. When you choose to have your event here in Piedmont Park, know that your funds go to the beautification of this beautiful park. Uh, so it's very rewarding. So it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, one thing I love working here for Piedmont Park Conservancy is the amazing clients that I get to meet uh, along the way. After a typical wedding, I sometimes feel like an extended part of the family. Piedmont Park is such an important part of the community, and the community is a very important part of the park. You can see it on full display here as people love giving back through various volunteer programs. And to help keep Piedmont Park looking its best, volunteers supplement the work of the operations team on all sorts of beautification projects. We have them come out and do things such as spreading mulch, collecting litter, removing overgrown vegetation, planting flowers. Um, so the services they provide to help us upkeep this park is vital. Last year alone, the Conservancy welcomed some 3,000 volunteers, and they donated 9,500 hours of their time. Almost every day we have some sort of volunteers in the park. Um, we have public opportunities several days a week, um, as well as sometimes we have private groups come out um, 
as a team to dedicate to the park. It's a great way to keep the community engaged and volunteering allows people to show some love to the park they love. It's a way for folks to give back to a space that means so much to them. Go in green in more ways than one. How this fan favorite attraction promotes healthy living and supports local growers. And everyone's invited to Piedmont Park, including your four-legged friends. The new features that will have tails wagging. That's next when Georgia's Hidden Treasures Piedmont Park continues. Everyone is welcome at Piedmont Park, and we're not just talking about people. We're talking about your four-legged friends as well. Piedmont's dog parks feature three acres for dogs to run off leash, separate enclosures for small and large dogs, and new trails and landscaping. And after your walk, how about a stop at the Green Market at the park's 12th Street entrance? Got everything you could want to eat, lots of local, local food. Every Saturday morning from late March through early December, Piedmont Park's Green Market offers seasonal fruits and vegetables from local growers. Locally produced food, so f these are farmer direct, like farmers from, from Georgia, from most within a couple, an hour or two from, from Atlanta, uh, they're bringing their stuff. Most cases, it's, you're, you're interacting one-on-one -on -one with the person who like grew that food. This year, the market is celebrating its 20th anniversary. It is one of the oldest and largest outdoor farmers markets in our area. Well, I've been wanting to come to the farmers market since I moved here last month, and then this is the first time I've been able to. Um, so I love stuff like this. In addition to produce, there are cooking demonstrations and stands with prepared food, coffee, and other items. There's something for just about everyone. I can pick up all the treats that I want for myself and then find little treats for him as well. So we both love it. We would love you to come. We want you to come. It's a, yeah, there's no entry fee or anything like that. Uh, it's, a, it's a market, so we, we encourage you to shop. Come do your grocery shopping here. You can get holiday gifts, things like that. Thank you so much for joining us for this exploration of Piedmont Park, one of Georgia's hidden treasures. And remember, this is your park, so the Conservancy wants you to be involved. Visit WSBTV.com for information on the anniversary celebration, the park's programs, and the comprehensive plan. We hope you have a great evening.